I got a request from people asking me how much JavaScript should I know to start with React. This video is for you guys. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and click the bell icon to stay up to date with all our videos. Hey everyone and welcome. So in this video we'll be talking about enough JavaScript for React. How much you need when you are learning React or it could be even for Angular or Vue. So on the left side you'll see these are some of my picks, the things which I thought might be helpful when you are learning React and even it helped me when I was starting it. I started in a reverse way. I started learning React and then had to go back to JavaScript to learn or think why things are happening in React. So I know I have jumped between both things back and forth in, in a reverse way. So I, now I know which things are helpful and why they are helpful. And this is based on a wonderful article by Robin Wyruch. So stay tuned and I hope you like it. I'll see you in just a bit. Okay, so the class-based and functional components. So if you are not using React hooks, you'll be having two types of returning a component. Component is anything which is a chunk of HTML. So if you see here, you have HTML, which are you are returning it, right? So this is a class-based component. Class is most of like a syntactic sugar because JavaScript doesn't have a class. So this is inside it. This is a function, but we are just naming it as a class. Okay. So this class-based component is going to return an HTML inside a method which is called render. So you don't need to get into depth if you are like starting this JavaScript for React, but you just need to know the names, what exactly they are. This uh, tutorial is for the purpose of just growing curiosity about some topics so that you can later Google it or check the answers on Stack Overflow. What things happen, why? Okay, this is not an in-depth tutorial because learning will be most of the time like you'll be doing self-learning. So you cannot be baby fed because in this time you can get everything on the internet. So, okay, so class-based component, you should definitely check out what exactly they are and what are the methods inside of it. A few methods are render. Render is something which will always display this thing on the screen. There are lifecycle methods. There are also custom functions, which you can create here. Okay, uh, custom function as an example, something like this. And let's go to the functional component. And here it is. So functional components are something like the same thing as class-based component. The only difference is they don't have any state. State and props are data, which you have inside of a uh, inside of both of these functions but state you don't have in a functional component because functional component will always have props and state will be a part of class component and even props will be a part of class component so uh, take a look what exactly they are what is a functional component what is a class based component and you'll get a better idea of it what is an arrow function so arrow functions are an addition inside of ES6 and this is just another way of writing a function. But a good help it does in the function in React is that about the bind binding thing. So something like this. So if you have this a simple function, you need to have a dot bind all the time. And if you have a arrow function, you don't really need to do the binding. This is some extra piece of code which we had to write whenever we were using the uh, non-error function functions, right? So you should, you'll get a better idea when you try to do it and you will have an error saying that you don't have a bind this and stuff like that and you will figure out what exactly is going on. Okay, so the third thing is a template literal. So this is something kind of a way to write strings. And before the way of writing strings was something like this. You write a string, you do a plus, and then you write a variable, right? But inside of our, like in ES6, they 
created template literals which you use tilde which is right next to number one on your keyboard and it ends with a tilde as well and all you simply need to do is pass in a variable inside of dollar and curly brackets so this is the format of writing a template literal or having a template literal and yeah take a look at it as well okay so the fourth thing is about a map reduce and filter so these are functions how to like show data when they are in an array so let's see an example of map this is a user which is an object which we don't we cannot have a map on an object it's supposed to be an array okay so here is an array of objects so users dot map so dot map it goes through each and every one one by one so if I return a HTML so user dot name is going to return Robin Marcus and yeah just two right now and so on so map function it is kind of a for loop inside you cannot use the the thing is that you cannot use for loop inside uh, HTML here right so for that reason you need to use map function reduce and filter go ahead and check out what exactly they does but you can maybe figure out from the name reduce it's gonna slim down the list based on some criteria then filter does the same thing here you can see user dot developer is developer if it is true that is when it's gonna return a, a object so the thing is that uh, users dot filter is going to return a new array with the result and then you do a map on it so don't be afraid of this chaining and it's super simple you will figure out what exactly it is so go ahead and figure out what map reduce and filter is going to do okay so let's go back to the topic number five var let and constant so var let and constant are just a way of variable declaration and there is a reason to not use var because var becomes more of a global thing and you can it can be accessed from everywhere and it has some limitations and why should we use let and const definitely go ahead and check it out Another thing is about topics uh, point six is import and export. Uh, I think I forgot the ternary operator, but let's talk about ternary operator. Inside of React, when you when you are using something, you might need to put a condition, if and else condition. So ternary operator is going to help you do that. If you, uh, I, I'll just show you the syntax of ternary operator. It should be somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Show users. It is a true or false. So show user question mark and this is going to be a first condition if the show user is true. If it is not true, simply throw a null. Or you can even handle it in a different way, something saying something like no user found or something like that. But this is a ternary operator. Ternary operator has this syntax, question mark, there should be a syntax somewhere okay they don't have a syntax here i'll need to go to this link but yes this is the syntax question mark and colon is going to be a syntax for ternary operator check out what exactly ternary operator is this is the name okay so the next thing is about seventh libraries how to use libraries in react or i think i missed okay import and export Import and export is going to be important as well because when you play around with files, you sometimes need to import a file, let's say in this example a CSS file. So in HTML you might be doing something like script or SRC or something like that, but in React you need to import it in this way for CSS. For JavaScript you can import it in this pattern you can even import file something like this import and file these are the variables or constants which we are passing and we export it from a file and this is how you import it so go ahead and check what exactly import export means and how to take care of it we'll be making a detailed video of all these things in a separate video but these, these are just like a starter things okay so 
why to use a import star s person this is something you should check out as well and even this is an important thing as why do you use as as is just to assign a name to this particular constant if you are importing it and you want to assign it your own name this is how you do it but yeah you right now it might be overwhelming for you to understand why it's happening but once you start a project you'll get to know what exactly this is okay libraries in react you will be importing a lot of libraries you'll be using a lot of libraries which you find on npm that might be helpful to you so you should know how to import libraries one example uh, this guy robin has here is axios so this is a fetch thing like how do you fetch is something built in by es6 and you can directly use it out of the box but if you want to use axios you need to import first first of all you might have to do a not you might you will have to do npm install axios or yarn whatever you are using and you'll have to import it and then you can call it saying that import axios from axios and this is how you use it import or uh, axios dot get your api and then you'll get your response here if you guys don't know what this dot set state is this is just a uh, function which is assigning or manipulating the result so this is not even in a technical term it's not even manipulating it is mm, it is kind of reassigning it because states are immutable you cannot change a state you can replace it change i mean like you cannot modify it you, you are supposed to replace it the whole thing okay next thing is about async and await this is a way to handle promises in react and definitely go ahead and check out what is async await it is extremely simple if you have any questions about it definitely let me know in the comment section i'll show you what exactly and how to fix it okay destructuring in react this would be an important part for us when we are using props and props and states so you will have to destructure you might see this in a code somewhere that this is a non destructured code list is equal to state dot list so if these two things match you can write it in this way constant curly bracket list is equal to state you don't need to write it twice so this is what exactly it means and also when you are using props in react this is how you destructure it so this is just a good way of writing things you can definitely write props.greeting there's nothing wrong in it but this is just a good way to write okay spread operator so spread operator are is something from javascript as well which is it's not specific to react so okay where is our spread operator here this three dot is going to be as a spread operator it, uh, it means that it's a spread operator so this kind of uh, is useful when you are using array or objects definitely go ahead and check it out what exactly a spread operator is it will be super helpful to you when you are using react okay so that's it for this video and we'll have more in-depth video about javascript for react but if you haven't subscribed to our channel please don't forget to subscribe it also give it a like button and comment what do you think about this video well in the next video we'll be coming up with something new so stay tuned and have a good one bye bye